Hello everyone and welcome to another educational video about screen printing by Catspit Productions. Okay, now today I was going to upload a different video today, but then I realized that I needed to do a little bit more preface work for you guys to be able to get the most out of the next 40 minute installment of learning how to do uh, simple spot color artwork in Illustrator. So today I'm going to show you a couple of things about uh, Illustrator that you'll probably need to know just to help you out in creating simple artwork. Okay, and first of all, um, let me create a couple of shapes to work with. So we're going to just create a rectangle. We, we know how to do this, right? Rectangle tool over here. And I'm just going to make a rectangle. Now, it has an outline. You know that. We talked about that in the last video. I'm going to go in here and give it a fill. Um, you know, right now it doesn't really matter. I'm just demonstrating some things. So here's a rectangle with a fill. All right. Now say we want to type a font. Okay, so I can go over here and get my text tool, type tool, right? Okay, and I'm going to put in, you know, we'll just use the old cat spit text. Okay, I'm going to size it. Remember, we did all this in the last video. I can use the points up here, or I can use free transform. All right, so let's use free transform right now. And here we go. We got cat spit. Okay, now what I wanted to demonstrate is is that when you're working with Illustrator and you have different objects like this, you can see that the cat's bit text is in front of the rectangle box. Okay, but sometimes that's not the case. As you add elements and you're working, the objects can be in different places, like um, on the canvas. How do I say? Uh, the rectangle could be in front of the text, like this. So I'm going to show you. You go up to Object, right up here in your file menu, click it, and you go to arrange. Bring to front, bring forward, send backwards, send to back, all this kind of stuff. So watch this. If I say send to back, the cat spit text disappears. Okay, it's there behind the rectangle. See? But it's not visible because it's behind the rectangle. And you can use this type of layering which is not really layers, don't get confused with layers, this is layering on one layer in Illustrator, you can use this to create effects and, you know, all types of stuff. See that? So like the cat spit's almost like sitting on the line, you know, you can make come into the black line a little bit, like it's bleeding in there, stuff like that. Um, okay, so if we wanted this cat spit font in front of the rectangular box, we'd go back to, to object, make sure you have it selected, have cat spit selected, Okay, and then you go up to object, and you could say bring to f uh, front, bring to front. Now, let me demonstrate something else if I can. Uh, here's a circle, and we'll make that blue so we can tell what's going on. And now, let's see where this one is. Now you can see the blue circle is in front of the cat spit text and it's in front of the rectangular box. Well, what if we wanted it to be behind the cat spit text but in front of the red box? Okay, so we select the blue circle, go up to object, arrange, and send backward just once. You see what it did? Okay, so now the circle is between the black cat spit text and the red rectangular box. Okay? You see that? So that's an important little function. Alright, let's demonstrate that again. We'll get a star. Okay, and this one I'll make some other color. Green. How about green for cat spit? Okay? And I'll put this over here. And there it is. Look, it's 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 in front of everything. Well I, I want it between cat spit and the red rectangle. So here, we're selected, we have the object selected, go up to object, arrange, send backward. And there it is. Okay, obviously with a black outline it doesn't work so good, so we can, we can, oops, we would actually go over to this black outline, the stroke, and we could just go down to here and say none. Oops, <laughs> I did not have the object selected. Make sure you have your object selected when you're trying to work with it, otherwise that's what happens. So here's the stroke. Now it should work. There we go. Okay, see? 
it's really important that when you're manipulating, make sure you have the object selected that you're trying to ma manipulate, okay? All right, so now, uh, you know what? I don't like the green star in between. I want it to go in the back. So now I would just select it again, okay? You select it, go up to Object, Arrange, and send backward again. And if it doesn't go, then you go back again to Object, Arrange, and just say, Send to Back. Okay, so sometimes, sometimes, you know, if there isn't anywhere for it to go, you, you know, send backward, like, it, it's a little weird. Sometimes you have to mess with it and just tell it to go all the way to the back, or bring it forward, or this or that. But there's only three places for this green star to be right now. In the way back, in the middle of the rectangle and the black text, or in front of the black text and the red rectangle. Okay, is that getting complicated? That's like getting a little confusing there, right? Okay. So, all right, so that that was that's important. That's what I wanted to teach you about layering. Okay? So, let's just let me just mess around with this a little bit and make it so that it kind of makes sense with what we were doing. All right, so say we had it like this and you know, this is kind of like the design we're working on, you know, for whatever reason. It's kind of like this. So you see we have the green star in the back. Then we have the red rectangle is in the middle. Then we've got the blue circle above the rec rectangle, but behind the black text. Okay? So that's a way that you can move objects around in front of one another or behind one another to create this cropping effect or things like that okay so here's the blue circle we'll just look at it one more time go up to object arrange and you can bring it forward you can send it backward or you can send it all the way to the back okay so there you go we'll bring it back one spot, bring forward, sometimes, see, like it doesn't want to bring forward, I just did it twice to make it come up that way. So, sometimes you just got to mess with it a little bit and move it around and, and get it to go into the right spot. Okay? So, that is how to move objects behind and in front of one another. Hopefully that made sense. I hope that helps you out because that's kind of important to know. Okay? Now, the other thing I wanted to show you is grouping. Okay, now we have a design here with multiple object elements, multiple objects and text. Okay, so if I wanted to move this on the document, if I go here and grab this, it's just it just grabs cat's bit. All right. Well, you don't want that. You want to be able to select all of these and move them as one object so that you can manipulate things. All right. So so what I can do is I have the the selection tool and I go onto the canvas, I click down and drag and select all of these objects. Okay, now all these objects are selected. I go up to Object, Group. Okay, now they're grouped. And what this means is that I can deselect them. Okay, and then when I click any one of these, any part of this object, it's selecting all of them. And they move together. This can also be handy when you're designing separate parts of the uh, design, separate elements of the design, and then say, okay, um, now I need to scale this down to fit the design. Okay, see, so it's grouped. I distorted it a little bit there. I didn't hold the shift down. But, okay, so let's see here. All right, that one's not... It's not holding proportion very well for me today. That's okay, though. Okay, so that would be it. You know, we can fix stuff like that anyway. See? You can pull it back down. All right, so scale tool might be better for this one just to get it scaled down and not have any... There you go. That's a little bit more proportional. Okay, so that's grouping. Okay, if you, if you ungroup these... Back up to Object, Ungroup. Now they're separate elements again. Okay? See that? 
And by the way, here's another little handy thing. Say you move something by accident, and you're like, oh, I didn't mean to drag that piece. Just go back up to Edit, Undo Move, or a shortcut key is Control-Z for Windows PC. Okay? All right, now, so we know how to group things, all right? We know how to um, arrange them, move them from the front, forward, backwards, okay? And they're grouped. All right, now there's another thing that I'd like to show you um, for text, because when you're creating artwork for screen printing, say you have to send this file to somebody. You know, after you're all done creating your artwork and, and you got to send this file to somebody now, maybe you have to send it to a printer or you have to, you know, send it to your artist or whatever the case is. Um, maybe you're doing your own artwork for screen printing and you want to, um, you know, you want to send it to an artist or send it to the screen printer and, uh, you know, you have fonts in it. Now, what happens is, is if you send an AI file with this font in here, and if the person on the other end, on their computer, does not have this font, Illustrator will substitute the font for something else that is on that user's computer. And you don't want that, because when you choose fonts for your design, you're choosing the fonts specifically to go with your design elements, right? So what you need to do is, let's say, first of all, let's maybe, here, so here's a font here. Neuropol, or whatever it's called, who knows what this is, okay, but here's a font that people are unlikely to have on their computer, right? So, what you do is select the, select the font, select the text, select the text, getting a little tongue-tied there, and then go up to type, come down to create outlines, okay? Now, what that did is it actually created outlines. It created this object as vector. It's no longer a font. You can't click in here and type anymore. It's a font. Okay? And let's see if we ungroup. Now, we actually have letters as objects separately. Okay? So, what this does and you may not necessarily want to ungroup it, but what it does is it changes the font from a font to a vector object, so that if you send this file to somebody else and they do not have the font, it will open up and the font will be exactly as you laid it out. It will be the same font that you chose on your computer, regardless of whether the other person has that font on their computer. Okay, so that's something that's very important to remember and note that when you're working with fonts in Illustrator and, and you're thinking, okay, I'm going to have to send this file to somebody, make sure you go up to Type and Create Outlines, okay? So let me show you again. I'll ungroup this, and then I'm going to have this text, okay? So here's the text selected. Go up to Object. I'm sorry, Type. <laughs> Get all confused. Go up to Type, Create Outlines. Okay, and there it is again. Now they're all outlines. If you needed to separate them for some reason, object, ungroup, and there it is. Okay? So that is an important thing to know about. Okay? Now, let's see. Um, one more thing I'll show you, because we ran into this on the last video. Okay, if I... If I'm opening a file and I bring in I bring in um, something you know to work with. Let me see. Um, oh, okay. Now I'm getting all confused. Don't you hate when you um, forget where stuff is? <laughs> okay. Okay. So remember the other day that we brought in this skull and I copied it. You know, I copied the skull and then I brought it into the other file we were working in and we pasted it in the file right okay what it did was it created this clipping mask alright I'm not an expert with Illustrator I don't know why it does this it's a pain in the butt the clipping mask is unnecessary but basically 
you can see it right here. It's right here. This is the clipping mask. This shouldn't be here. I don't know why it does this automatically, but basically select it, right click, release clipping mask. Okay, now it's released. Select it again and edit cut. Okay, now the clipping mask is gone and the object is here by itself. Okay, and that's what you want. I don't know why it does the clipping mask, but if you get clipping masks like that, that's how you do it. Right click, release clipping mask. Okay, now one more thing we can show you the group here. See that? Look at that. This object is ungrouped. So I went and grabbed a part of the eye, and it didn't. It, it's just grabbing, look, leaving pieces behind, right? So there's a perfect illustration in Illustrator of how or why you would want to group your. Uh, object so select it all and then go up to object group and it's grouped now when I click it anywhere it drags the whole thing oops <laughs> see what I did I actually selected cat's bit too so right now cat's bit and the skull are grouped but I can fix that back to object ungroup deselect go back to the skull only select the skull and its elements and then say group okay <laughs> Okay, you're going to find that, you know, working in Illustrator is a lot of fun. And um, all kinds of weird things can happen to you when you're working with stuff. And it can be a little frustrating at times. And, you know, trying to choose the right elements with the selector and, you know, dragging stuff around. And, oh, man, I, I uh, you know, so it, it can be it can be a little finicky and a little fussy. And here's another uh, little tip for you. You can use this little um, magnifying glass zoom tool over here in your toolbar. Okay come over here click the zoom bar and then you can bring it over to the object you're working on and click it and it zooms in on that object okay and sometimes this is good when you want to go in really close and then get the selection tool and pick out little elements that you couldn't get otherwise you follow of course this object would have to be ungrouped deselected and now I can go in and pick these little objects see that so stuff like that and look at that somebody put this thing in here to create this line isn't that amazing okay so um, there you go couple of tips I think these tips will help you a lot uh, in being prepared for the next episode in how to create screen printing artwork for printing t-shirts with illustrator by catspit productions Okay, so that's it for today, I think, and I think now we're ready to upload the 40-minute long uh, simple illustration of how to, to put some artwork together. It's very simple, and that'll be coming up next, okay? So remember, guys, please rate thumbs up. Can't tell you how important that is. Rate thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Should I write it in here for you? Thumbs up. Here, look. Thumbs up, man. Bring it to million, billion points. Bigger, 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 bigger. Thumbs up. I can go in here and type it. 200 point. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. <laughs> rate thumbs up, guys. All right, thanks a lot for watching. Please subscribe. If you like what you see, rate thumbs up. Comment below, all that jazz. I appreciate your support, your time and attention, and we'll see you next time.